Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks for watching and welcome back to the channel. Hey, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. I do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, what's taking you so long? It's not hard. Just go ahead down there, click the subscribe button, and then click the little bell that appears next to it. And every time I create another informative HVAC related video, you will get a notification. Anyway, what are we talking about today? Today, I would like to set the record straight. That's right, it's myth busting time here on the HVAC Service Mentor channel. And the myth in particular are the top five myths about R22 in 2021. Now we have to have some date going on here because when you put something out to the internet, it stays there forever and things can change over time. So to make this time relevant, I have to let you know that right now, as I record this, we are in the spring of 2021. And what we're talking about are the regulations and the misinformation about the regulations surrounding R22. In the last couple of years, I have heard a distinct increase in the level and the volume of mis and dis information surrounding R22. And I thought it would be important to set the record straight because the sources that I hear this misinformation coming from are professional HVAC technicians. Most recently, I had a uh, technician who is otherwise an excellent technician with a high level of skill and capability, been in the business for well over 20 years, tell me that so-and-so about R22. And he said, right? Actually, no. Let's get into it here. Here are the top five myths and the myth busting about R22 in 2021. Number one, R22 is banned. This is probably the most insidious myth because this is the one that all of the other ones are born from. And it's tricky because it's almost true, but it's not exactly true. The idea that R22 is banned spawns all kinds of other ideas like it can't be used, it's not available, and all kinds of other crazy ideas, none of which are actually true. Here is what is true about the ban on R22. First of all, R22 was scheduled to be phased out in 2020 and it was as of january 1st 2020. now leading up to that all the way back in 1991 the plans were laid to stop using r22 by 2020. so this was not a surprise even though some people act as though oh 2020 some new regulations happened well what actually happened was some minor modifications to existing regulations, but the whole idea of R22 going away in 2020 was a long time coming and everybody knew that it was on its way and then it finally happened. Not really a big shocker. Leading up to the um, stopping of R22, the manufacturers of R22 continued to manufacture as much as they possibly could. Now, there was a whole phase-out schedule involved. As we began to approach the year 2020, the amount of R22 that was allowed to be produced or imported into the United States would gradually diminish year by year. And somewhere along the way, everybody realized, hey, man, we are not using as much R22 as we thought we would. The marketing campaigns have been working. People have been replacing R22 equipment using the new R410A equipment. Therefore, demand for R22 has been going down, but production has remained high, and we have an awful lot of R22 around. So they accelerated the phase-out schedule of R22. What happened in January 1 of 2020 was this. No more production of R22 in the United States. It can no longer be manufactured nor can it be legally imported. That's it. Because of the ramp up of production leading up to the eventual stoppage, there is a lot of R22 stockpiled and there is nothing wrong with using it. There is a lot of R22 stockpiled and there is no prohibition or law against using it. Therefore, it is not banned. However, it is no longer allowed to be produced or imported. Number two, it is illegal to operate systems that use R22. 
Now I've heard this in quite a few different iterations, and I've got to tell you, it is just a plain out and out falsehood, if not a downright lie. What will happen is a technician will visit a customer and they will find out, oh, hey, customer, you are using an air conditioning system that uses R22 as the refrigerant. Therefore, R22 is banned. It's illegal. You can't use it anymore. You need to buy a new air conditioner. And none of those things are true. There's actually nothing compelling anyone to stop using their R22 system as long as it's functional. In fact, I am a perfectly good example of this. I have an R22 system in my home and it is a 15 sear system. And I live in a climate where 13 sear is still the minimum standard. 15 sear would still be an upgrade for someone living in my area. So there is absolutely zero benefit that I would receive from replacing the perfectly good air conditioner that I have right now. And that is true of anyone else who is operating an R22 air conditioning system. If it's functional, if it's working, there's absolutely nothing wrong with continuing to use it. Now, one of the kind of side falsehoods that go along with this is that operating an air conditioning system that utilizes R22 is damaging to the environment. This is also not true. As long as the R22 stays inside the machine, it doesn't do anything to the environment. The damage happens if and when that refrigerant leaks out. And that is what the whole EPA 608 regulations are designed to prevent, avoid, and minimize is that leakage. Number three, if an R22 system is low on refrigerant, it is illegal to add refrigerant to it and that system must be replaced. Are you noticing a theme here? Well, there is one. The theme is that if you have R22, you need to buy a new air conditioning system. And that is where a lot of these falsehoods come from. They come from people who all they want to do is sell new air conditioning systems. Now, selling air conditioning systems is what some people do for a living. Hey, that's totally true, but we should be factual about it when we do it. And the fact of the matter is, is that if an R22 system is low on refrigerant, there is nothing wrong with adding more R22 to the system. Absolutely nothing at all. However, there are some regulations that kick in when it comes time to say, when do we have to say that it is illegal to allow a system to continue leaking? And here's what those regulations are in a nutshell. If the system contains more than 50 pounds of refrigerant, now this is putting us straight into the commercial category for sure. If it contains more than 50 pounds of refrigerant and it leaks more than 10% of the total system charge in one calendar year, it must be repaired and it must be verified that it is no longer leaking once it has been repaired. That repair is perfectly acceptably deep to be done using refrigerant 22. There's nothing that says you have to remove the R22 and go to a different type of system, nothing whatsoever. If your system has less than 50 pounds of refrigerant in it, the regulations are really non-existent compelling someone to repair it. In fact, the letter of the law actually says you can continue dumping R22 into that system as long as you want to. There's nothing legally stopping you from doing that. Now, I am certainly not going to advocate that. That is a terrible idea, but it's not illegal. Number four, it is illegal to repair an R22 system. You're probably getting the idea by now that that kind of idea is absolutely false. And it is absolutely false. Again, this comes from a service call where a technician goes to someone's home or business and the air conditioning system isn't working. And lo and behold, the sticker on the side of the unit says it has R22 refrigerant in it. And the, uh, the saying is, hey, your system is broken. It's an R22 system. It is illegal to repair this. You need to buy a new air conditioner. Absolutely not true. If you can get repair parts for it, you're more than welcome to use them. If you can get repair refrigerant for it, which you can do, you're more than welcome to use it. Uh, a lot of folks are under the impression, actually, that repair parts for R22 systems are not available anymore. And, um, for example, if an evaporator coil develops a leak and it can't be repaired, then the whole system has to be replaced. Not true. Evaporator coils are available. And uh, you can use them on R22. In fact, the evaporator coils we use today on split systems for R410A 
are the same coils we would use for R22. The only difference is the thermostatic expansion valve or the metering device piston, what size they are. That's it. And on a TXV, what is the refrigerant compatibility? So uh, don't be fooled. Repair parts are available. However, they're becoming less common because R22 systems are becoming less common. As I said, R410A has really taken over the industry and R22 systems are becoming more and more rare. So wholesalers and manufacturers are less likely to stock and provide replacement components. So make sure you make your calls first. Compressors, thermostatic expansion valves, um, other refrigerant based components, fan motors, electrical parts, of course, all 100% available and able to be used to repair R22 systems. Number five, if a system uses R22, it has to be converted to a different kind of refrigerant. Now this is a little twist on things, right? They're saying, they're not saying, Hey, you need to buy a whole new air conditioner. They're saying, Hey, you just can't use R22 anymore, which as we know, isn't true. And there is no regulation compelling anyone to convert their R22 system to an alternative refrigerant. Now, ironically, the market has produced a lot of R22 alternatives in the recent years. And many of these are what are known as drop-in replacement refrigerants. And the idea is that you can pull out the R22 and drop in this replacement refrigerant right in place of it with no further modifications. Uh, it's not always that easy. There's lots of caveats and exceptions to those rules. Generally, this only works in very small or close coupled systems like small rooftop units where the compressor, condenser, and evaporator are all very close together and there's not a lot of piping. There's not a lot of elevation difference between the uh, compressor and the evaporator, for example, either up or down and some other issues as well. But one of the biggest issues is that replacement refrigerants for R22 regardless of what they are, whether that be R407C or uh, one of the other drop-in refrigerants, there's a dozen of them at least these days, none of them will function as well in that system as R22 does. So why would you do that? There are very few circumstances under which I would um, recommend a refrigerant replacement for an existing system. And one of those would be if you have a system that has a large volume of refrigerant, because in spite of the fact that there's plenty of R22 available, the price is very, very high. In fact, R22 today is roughly five to six times the cost of most other refrigerants for similar applications, which is, yes, it's, it's more expensive. And if you have a system that holds hundreds of pounds of refrigerant, that's a very, very significant cost. Um, and in the event that you are losing all of your refrigerant and you're going to have to replace it, that is an opportunity for you to decide, well, let's replace it with a less expensive refrigerant. Uh, that would be one, uh, probably about the only time I would really recommend a refrigerant replacement. And there are a couple of other ones too, but they are very conditional, very situational, and they're mostly all large commercial applications. Residential applications, I do not recommend it. Honestly, uh, the entire the value of the entire charge of most residential systems compared to the cost of pulling that refrigerant out and then doing all of the necessary steps involved in replacing a refrigerant and using a drop-in, because it's not just as easy just dropping it in. There's a lot more to it than that. Um, really outweigh any cost benefits. It's going to be fairly even Steven or slightly more expensive on the R22 side, but not a whole heck of a lot. So the advantage really isn't there. So in summary, R22 is not banned. R22 is perfectly available. It's perfectly legal to use. And if you're complying with the uh, leak rate uh, repair requirements, there's absolutely no reason to stop using it. Now, when it comes time to install new equipment, for either uh, an upgrade or energy savings or reliability or any of those other very good reasons to replace equipment, you won't be going back with R22 equipment. You'll be going back with usually R22 these days. I'm sorry, you won't be going back with R22 equipment, usually R410A these days, but that too is changing. There are already regulations being planned to phase out R410A as well. So I want to hear from you folks, put a comment down below of your wildest or craziest 
untrue myth you've heard about the use of R22 here in the 2020s. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, that does it for me today. I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, if you are interested in more thorough training events uh, that are a little bit more formal than what you'll find and a little more complete than what you'll find here on YouTube, visit my website at www.hvacservicementor.com. There are a lot of really cool training opportunities there that are available for you to check out. Also, while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to the email list. Every new subscription gets a uh, free shot at one of our full-length training uh, sessions, so you can check it out and see what it's like. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.